What's up guys, Jeff here, Mad Hatter's Reef, and if you're new to what we're doing here, this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love me some reef tanks, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at a project that is near and dear to my heart and it's something that has been in the works for a while now so i was testing the water parameters of the water box and found that the nitrate levels were pretty high they were actually uncomfortably high for me uh, they were north of 25 parts per million now for acceptable range on nitrates you really want to have that between 10 and zero you don't want zero because you don't want to strip your water of nitrates completely but you do want to have it lower than 30 parts per million. So I decided to reach into my bag of tricks and pull out the Aquamax Allergy Reactor, put it back into commission and utilize it on the water box, but I didn't have any Chato to put into the reactor. And that was something I could have went online and ordered, but I didn't really want to. I was heading down to Fragtoberfest in Connecticut and basically I figured somebody there has to have that so when i went down to connecticut for fragtoberfest i bumped into a gentleman by the name of Waz, who is the teacher that leads the hall high coral project and i was really intrigued by what he was doing and we talked for a while i ended up uh, reconnecting with him had him on the podcast and it was a really great episode on the podcast and i'll put a link to that if you want to hear it in its entirety in the description below if you want to check that out and i got really excited uh to see that there is a school that actually has reef tanks in a classroom and uses the reef tank to teach science and biology and chemistry because there's a lot going on inside a reef tank. So after Fragtoberfest, I ran home with my Chato and set up the reactor. But before we jump into the results of using the Chato on the water box, let's take a look at the Hull High Coral Project. I am a 10 year teacher now, have been into reef tanks since I was 14. That's kind of what got me into teaching science, but reef tanks really got me into the chemistry and the geology and the biology of science. So uh, majoring in environmental and marine science at UConn, and I've been teaching at Hall High School in West Hartford, uh, teaching earth science and marine science. I'm at the point now where I have established the Hall High Coral Project, in which we have a 450 gallon coral system that is specifically designed for farming corals as well as for research on corals. We have four low boys that are plumbed together, you know, two radions on each low boy, and we have different corals in each of them. We have an SBS tank, we have an LPS tank, we have softies with that mostly have leathers, and then our other softies tank is anemones and mushrooms. And uh, also we have a, a separate low boy that has, is just a refugium. So Cato algae and uh, mangroves. Here's how my day works is I teach earth science to freshmen in the morning and they don't do a lot with the aquariums. So I do three periods of that in a row, boom, boom, boom. Then I get my lunch and then my marine world opens up. So my um, afternoon pretty much from, I wanna say 11 o'clock to two every day is me working on marine science with about i have this semester i have 30 kids between the two classes smaller than usual my enrollment was actually lower this year i'm working on other things to increase that but what these kids do is they each um we have content and curriculum in labs some of our labs directly associate with the aquarium like for example we have this lab in which the kids have to open up all the different marine test kits that we have and they have to test the water, and then we look at um, we look at our Neptune systems data and look how things like pH and temperature have changed throughout the day and have changed from month to month. And they do like a comparative analysis of how different things affect each other, like how pH and temperature are associated, or how pH changes throughout the day when the light's on, and like why that happens. Um, but all the kids on top of doing whatever it is we're doing in the class with our curriculum, they all have aquarium jobs. And I see uh, the kids for, I see my two classes every day, but I also see them for a lab period twice a week. 
And during those lab periods for about 10 minutes, they all start to do their different jobs. Um, so I don't really put my hands in the tank much at all. I sometimes bark out some orders or I bring something to a kid's awareness, but I don't, the kids feed the tank. They do all the testing. They do the filter, filter socks. Thank God. Um, they, they do the water changes. They check the top off. We have an automatic top off system. The kids clean the pumps. The kids clean the buckets. We have a lot of five gallon buckets that like constantly need white vinegar cleaning and rinsing. Um, they handle all those things. What's really cool about a coral propagation system in high school, and th this is kind of a shout out to any high school teachers that are like in the hobby that are listening to this right now. What I love about it more than anything is every like when you're a teacher, you kind of get stuck in just doing this like same almost like routine, like kind of like a band that tours and does the same show over and over and over. That's what your years become when you're a teacher is the beginning of the year. You do it the same way you did the year before in the year before in like your April in 2018 was the same as your April in 2017 coral propagation systems completely turn that upside down in a good way because every year that I've had this system, I'm on four years now, I've some I've had some extremely different goal and set. So what it looked like then was different than what it'll look like next year. And like so this year was just getting this expansion system because last year we only had the 90 gallon in my old classroom. So this year was like expanding the system. But next year, what I'm what I'm working towards is the kids doing uh, research projects on corals. So I'm going to treat the tanks almost like battleship and number and label all the different sections of the tank and give each kid something like four square inches of the aquarium. And then they're going to pick their species and they're going to pick some type of independent variable and then measure the corals growth for like seven months. And then at the end of the year, they're going to present their findings in some type of education conference scenario. I still haven't worked that out. I'd love to be able to do it at like Mystic Aquarium something. And now that Mystic Aquarium has this brand new education building, I'm sure that, I'm sure there's something we'll be able to work out. But that's that's where I'm going. It's kind of like a capstone project, which is becoming very popular right now in the education world with uh, juniors and seniors. Um, it's actually becoming graduation requirements in many districts. It just became a graduation requirement in our district. So that's where we're working on getting these corals to be directly associated with the student's curriculum and their graduation portfolio. One of the things that us teachers struggle to find in a student, which is intrinsic motivation, that's something that is just always lacking in kids is the desire to learn to learn just that that want to have to learn something not because of a grade and something like an aquarium and we all know that everyone listening to this right now knows for a fact that the reason that they learn something more about their aquarium is because they want to. They don't feel like they have to because at the end of the day, you could just throw your tank in the trash any day you want. You can, but we choose not to. We choose to keep going. So we always have this desire to learn what it is we need to do to fix it, to make that coral happy, to make that fish's life better. And why not, tr why not take that intrinsic motivation motivation that exists for us and give it to students because I mean the older you get the harder it is to have that intrinsic motivation so when you like give it to kids I have kids that learn stuff past me in in areas that I don't know in the aquarium world because there's so many different you know fields from the technology to the biology to the chemistry there's so many little niches in there and I have kids that want to know how to make like the clams life a little bit better that we have. And they will go home and research it just because like there was no homework assignment. There was nothing. 
attached to that. And then they'll come in and be like, I'm going to try this method. And I always say yes, because it's not my system, it's theirs. Um, and I think when I look, when I tell them that over and over and over again, it develops another fundamental thing that is very important for kids, which is ownership. Um, and when they see that I'm always like standing off and I'm not like getting my hands myself into the tank, they know that it's just on them, um, which is really important in education. Um, and I think the other thing, I think the last like piece of it is it makes science real. It takes it off the textbook and puts it in their hands or in front of them. That is the Hull High Coral Project. They're doing some amazing work and I'm very impressed with what they got going on. And I wish that there was more programs like this in every high school. If we had projects like this when I was in school, I probably would have done a lot better job and would have took school a little bit more serious, at least at the high school level. So as a show of support for the Hull High Coral Project, all the ad revenue for this video is going to be donated to their work that they got going on at Hall High. And if you want to support the Hall High Coral Project, there is going to be a address in the link in below that you can send your donations. They don't have a PayPal or a GoFundMe page. Uh, they gotta do it the old fashioned way, send them a check in the mail and they'll cash it. They have um, an account that's set aside just for the Hall High Coral Project and all the money donated will go just to that project. And if you are a teacher that is looking to put a project like this together for your school, uh, Waz has graciously made himself available. So feel free to send me an email and I will pass your email along to Waz himself. And as far as the water box goes and its little nitrate problem, we have successfully driven down uh, the nitrates in the water box to 10 parts per million. I'm very happy to report uh, the Chato has been growing like crazy and what I do every once in a while is I take it out of the reactor, I chop it in half and put a little bit back in the reactor and then take the other half and give it away. So if you want some Chato, I got that available on the website at mrbshop.com and all the proceeds from those sales will also be going to the Hall High Coral Project. So very, very happy uh, to share this, guys. So that's gonna do it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this one and wanna see more videos like this from Mad Hatter's Reef, make sure you hit that like button and leave a comment down below. And again, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. That's gonna do it for today. I wanna thank you for joining me and I will see you next week right here with a brand new video. Yeah.